It's been said, war is hell. Well, war is war, and hell is hell, and of the two, war is a lot worse. So imagine having one of the most stressful roles in the Vietnam War, that of a sniper. I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, we're exploring a powerful narrative, a profound narrative of redemption and healing with Dr. Hani Raoul Kuzam. His book is called From Brokenness to Atonement, Faith, Hope, and Love, A Vietnam War Sniper's Journey and a Psychiatrist's Bibliotherapy. In the book, the doctor presents a gripping tale of Mr. L's battle with his inner demons and his quest for peace and healing. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Doctor, great to see you here today on Spotlight. Thank you, sir. I didn't know if you want to see how the book looked like. So sure, you can hold nothing. up the cover. We've put up a cover of the book as well. Okay. Um, it's so a that's great right. looking cover, that's for sure. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, being a sniper uh, during war times is perhaps one of the most stressful roles you could possibly assume because you're doing a lot of killing. You're killing unsuspecting people in some cases. And I imagine for Mr. L, that took a toll. Tell us a little bit about his story. Yes, so Mr. L was an orphan. Mm. So he ne never met his biological parents, but was fortunate to be sent to an orphanage that was run by Carmelan nuns. Mm -hmm. And initially he was very aloof and angry and upset, but uh, was fascinated by one of the nuns' language because she spoke in French. And he did not know French. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know her language, so she promised that she will teach him French if he changed his attitude. Mm -hmm. And she nurtured him tremendously. So he became fluent in the French language, and she introduced him to all the literature of the world. Mm -hmm. So his personality changed from being an angry, upset orphan to a very talented master of the left of the French language. Mm -hmm. And also he was left-handed. So sometimes people come visit the orphanage to give some activity to the orphans. And one day a Lieutenant John appeared in the orphanage and told Mr. L, would he like to learn how to hunt? Mm -hmm because that orphanage was in New Hampshire. And also he asked him if he likes to play baseball. So Mr. L learned and mastered hunting and baseball with his left hand. Hmm. And that is an advantage in baseball. Yeah. So he won lots of trophies. So eventually he was recruited and sent to the Vietnam War and using his skill in hunting, uh, that made him one of the most wanted sniper because of his left eye's dominance and his left hand. Hmm. He was an extreme asset to the military in that role as a sniper. Hmm. He's a patriot and he loves his country, so other sniper gets jealous about him. Mm. And they tricked him, telling him there will be an expected attack near the American embassy in Saigon. Mm. But so he shot three bikers because they told him they're going to disseminate bomb, but these were innocent bikers. Mm. They had no bomb. Mm. So that's how his journey with survival, guilt, began, and the torment of post-traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. 
It's hard enough to kill someone who is actively engaged in warfare, but to accidentally or mistakenly kill someone who is a civilian or an innocent, that bears even harder on your mental wellness, I'm sure. At what point did you meet Mr. L and what steps did you take to help him achieve inner peace and uh, and survive this PT, uh, PSTD that he was suffering from? So I was a psychiatrist on call uh, at the hospital in New Hampshire. And I was called in the middle of the evening telling me there is a veteran that we want you to assess because he has had an accident that injured his eyes. Mm. And we performed surgery to repair his eyes injury. But he is now uh, sound asleep. And he has rapid eye movement, which happen when you fall asleep. And we would like you to come to prevent this rapid eye movement because it can adversely affect his eye surgery. Mm. That was an unreasonable request because the easiest way to prevent rapid eye movement is just to wake the person. Yeah. There is no medication to stop it. Right. And I was also a little frustrated because I was planning to watch a documentary about the assassination of President Sadat, who was a president of Egypt and was assassinated because he made peace with Israel. Mm. But uh, I went to see him where he was sound asleep and he was singing mm. in his sleep. And the nurses said that he is singing in Vietnamese and you have to stop him from singing and stop his rapid eye movement mm -hmm. because that will jeopardize his surgery, uh, which is not accurate. Mm -hmm. He was not singing in Vietnamese. He was singing in French. Mm -hmm. I know French because I went to French school. But anyway, uh, thankfully, he walked on his own. So when he woke on his own, he didn't want to talk to anybody. This book then is going to tell his journey with me over eight and a half years, where mm. I saw him once a month for one hour. Amazing. And it's a memoir of his life, what happened to his life, and helped me also retrospect on my own life. Yeah. So that book is a mixture of Mr. L's story of healing and redemption and a reflection on my life. So it goes through lots of history of conflict in the world. Uh, mm. It talks about medical education in the U.S. and in different countries. And it travel a journey with Mr. L in various countries that he mm. told me about. And I travel with him in countries and state I visited. Hmm. Amazing. It's an amazing journey you had with this man and an amazing road you took to get him well. Uh, tell us a little bit about bibliotherapy and how storytelling and reading can be powerful tools for psychological healing and transformation. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you. So we know storytelling is the most powerful way to know people. And uh, when you tell a story or listen to a story, even as a child, it stays with you forever. Sure. He didn't want to receive any treatment for his PTSD. And he said, I don't have PTSD. I want to die, but I cannot commit suicide because that's against my belief. So I'm hoping to somebody kill me. And uh, his story is to put himself in harm's way to be killed but it never worked. And he said, I don't want to see a shrink. I told him, that if you don't accept therapy, they may commit you. So he said, okay, I can meet with you once a month. But what we are going to do is, we're going to read books. Mm. He wants me to read the books that he read in the orphanage. And when we meet, we'll discuss these books. Mm. So bibliotherapy is not an evidence-based therapy. In other words, it's not practiced much, 
But what it is, is if patients are willing to read books that coincide with their condition, maybe the life of the author or the life of the character in these books will help them heal because they will identify how the hero or the victim was healed in that story and maybe they can follow the same route. Mm. So that's what happened with the bibliotherapy that over a period of eight and a half years, we read multiple, multiple books. He helped me renew my love for literature and the books that we read are mentioned in the book I wrote. Okay. They are very important bibliography and real stories. So that's how it ended that the books helped him and helped me grow in my career. So what he taught me indirectly, I passed it on to other veterans. And it turned out to be very effective for these veterans who did not want to re receive any medication and did not want to have traditional psychotherapy or counseling. Mm -hmm. So the bibliotherapy helped me made the Mr. L remind himself of how he grew in the orphanage and all the tender love he received there yeah. and helped the other veterans. Amazing story. It's just an absolutely amazing story about how these books helped transform this man's life first as a child and then later as an adult suffering from PTSD. Uh, the name of the book that is written by the doctor, which is quite amazing, one that you will find very, very therapeutic yourself. Uh, I think you can borrow some of these techniques and learn from it, uh, particularly if you're facing a mental health challenge or PTSD or a survivor of any kind of situation that has left you traumatized. The name of the book is called From Brokenness to Atonement, Faith, Hope, Love, and it is a Vietnam War sniper's journey and a psychiatrist's bibliotherapy. The links, once again, are below this interview. It's an amazing book. And we've had the pl pleasure of speaking with this do amazing doctor for the last few moments, and we appreciate his time. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us here today on Spotlight. Thank you, sir, for having me. And I hope you have a wonderful day, sir. Same thank to you. I appreciate it. And to the folks at home, I'm Logan Crawford, thanking you for your time this time until next time on Spotlight. <laughs>